Hello and welcome to another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson from the Loman Abdo Law Firm and one of the hosts for Western Wisconsin Journal in the legal and government area. And today, uh, our guest is a government official, uh, St. Croix County Administrator, Patrick Thompson. Welcome back to the show. Hi, Jamie. Can I call you Good. Pat? Yes. I didn't ask you that off camera, yeah. but Good to it's be a here. little clumsy to call you Mr. Thompson and everything. No, so. Pat is, Pat's fine. Plus, you're a returning guest. Now, you were last on the show when? I believe about two and a half years ago, um, shortly after I came, uh, the current uh, or the former board chair, Daryl Stanford, um, and myself uh, participated in your, your show and uh, I believe at that point gave kind of an overview of where things stood with right. St. Croix County. I think we kind of introduced you, um, so I want to reacquaint uh, our audience with you. Uh, first of all, uh, you were hired as a county administrator, is that correct? Yes, in June of 2011, I was uh, hired as the first county administrator for St. Croix County. And explain uh, the difference between movement from an administrative coordinator to a county administrator briefly. Well, in 2010, the board went through a process of downsizing from 32 uh, county board members to 19 uh, board members. And shortly after that, the uh, board went through a process of uh, looking at the professional management structure of the county and made a decision uh, as a board that uh, for leading St. Croix County into the future that um, a more uh, professional type position of county administrator would be needed to manage, uh, you know, one of the fastest growing counties in the state of Wisconsin. And they thought, you know, going into the future, looking ahead that um, a professional manager uh, with uh, a little more authority to manage day-to-day -day operations would be the best um, manage, management structure for the county going forward. And if I recall, you came from Ohio, is that right? Yes, I was the county administrator in Hamilton County, Ohio, uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio. And was that county, uh, how did that compare to St. Croix size-wise? Um, it was quite a bit larger. Um, it was approximately 800,000 in population, and it was a large urban metro county. Um, but my experience, my, my roots are in Wisconsin and I also served as um, administrative coordinator in Dunn County uh, for approximately 10 years and then also served as an administrative coordinator in La Crosse County uh, prior to going to uh, Ohio. And so- Okay, so you kind of returned home then. Kind of returned home and, and also had a good blend of experience of both having served as an administrative coordinator in Wisconsin and then also as a county administrator out of the state. And so when I came back into St. Croix County with the new uh, position of county administrator, it was, a, it was kind of a good blend of experience. Well, and I appreciate that. So you had prior Western Wisconsin experience anyway. Yes. And uh, appreciate you coming back on the show. Just want to kind of give us an update as how things are going, because I noticed we had an election, a little bit of a shift in power, if you will, maybe on the political spectrum, uh, and there was a small flap early on. The, the board wanted to look at your position specifically and determine whether to go back to um, the administrative coordinator or stay with the county administrator. Tell us what, what it ended up happening then. Well, the board, I think, wisely wanted to come in um, as new county board supervisors, new elected officials with a new um, leadership on the board. And I think it was, um, we had been with the county administrator form of government for only three years at that point. And so I think the new board wisely wanted to come in and look at how things were being managed um, and whether or not the county administrator form of government was the the right form of government for St. Croix County. And so uh, the board came in and, and looked at this very closely and uh, made the decision then that yes, the county administrator form of government is um, serving St. Croix County well and will continue to into the future. And so the board made a decision um, that they would retain 
the county administrator form of governance for St. Croix County. Okay, and you, a fascinating stat with the two elections that have happened since your hire, then it, uh, 17 of the 19 supervisors have been replaced in a sense that are new. Yes, yes, uh, there were um, approximately 10, I believe, in, uh, in the 20, uh, 12 election, and then in 2014, there were another 11 new board members. And so there's been, um, I think there's only two board members now on the board that are uh, the original board members when I first came in June of 2011. And so that has added to an element of change in culture, a change in leadership, a change in philosophy, um, and direction for the county. And so uh, as county administrator and, and the staff and the team, the management team that we've built, we need to be nimble. We need to be, we need to be able to adjust and uh, be responsive to the new leadership on the board. And so we're here to serve not only the citizens of St. Croix County, but also in my position in the management team that we've built, we need to be responsive and serve our elected officials, the County Board of Supervisors, in the direction that they want to take the county. And so, yes, it's, it's created, created a culture of change and, um, you know, that, that's all good. That's part of our process. That's part of the democratic process. I would say, and I looked the website, by the way, is just people can Google St. Croix County, Wisconsin and get lots of information of the various departments. And, of course, yours would be administration, and that's where they'll find the budgets from over right. the years, correct? Right. And um, the one that's most recently posted was from 2014, although we just started 2015. And I see that compared to um, expenditures four years ago, um, the county is actually down a couple million dollars. Right. Overall, I mean, our our budgets have been fairly lean over the past few years. Certainly, we've made um, increases in our capital improvement spending. We've developed a five-year capital improvement plan, which had never been done before. And um, we're trying to look ahead and look into the future. And so we're we're trying to right size, you know, the operation, looking at where expenditures most need to be um, directed in terms of transportation funding, our public safety and law enforcement areas of county government, our health and human services, and those areas where we need to be poised uh, to address the, the continual growth in St. Croix County. And so we have to make sure our roads and bridges are able to accommodate the number of uh, commuters that we have in St. Croix County. We want to make sure that our, our uh, infrastructure is solid and so that in terms of economic development, uh, uh, our um, transportation infrastructure is very important. And okay. so is our, our public safety and health and human services as well. And um, I guess one of the areas, uh, you mentioned all the, those are the largest areas in your budget yes. as far as groups, but um, the one that seemed to have a lot of press over the last couple of years is the nursing home. And I noticed that, for instance, in 2010, the spending on the nursing home as part of the county budget was $6.3 I understand that was before you came in, and it was roughly about that amount than the next year in 2011. But then there's been a shift since then, and now we're down to about $4.2 of county right. taxpayer funds being used on the nursing home. Uh, how, did, how did that come about? Right. The, the prior board, um, uh, we weren't too sure with the prior board whether or not the, the thinking or the philosophy, uh, the direction our board was more um, to maintain the status quo and looking at a, a new nursing home facility, a new health center, um, uh, wasn't really part of the, the prior board's um, top priorities. And so, uh, we actually went through a process of trying to um, streamline the nursing home and reduce expenditures. We actually reduced the number of beds in the nursing home from approximately uh, 70 plus beds down to about 50 beds, all in the, the thinking that the 
we wanted to make sure, the board wanted to make sure that the property tax levy applied uh, for the health center operations was um, at a, almost a zero levy. And so through the process of um, trying to reduce expenditures, um, we actually almost brought the health center to a zero levy. Now, the, the plan right now is to take that strong financial position of the health center, which we currently are in, and trying to build for the future and looking at um, the health center needs going into the future. And so currently uh, we have a plan to um, use the uh, existing nursing home and remodel the, the current nursing home 50 beds um, into a 40 bed uh, CBRF uh, assisted living facility. So CBRF community based residential yes, facility. Okay. Right. In the remodeled current okay. nursing home and then build an additional 50 bed skilled nursing uh, facility and then a, adjacent to all this and, and um, co-located a 10 bed um, uh, dementia care crisis unit. And so it would be a total of 100 beds um, so you're actually going up. We're almost. going up. We're, we'll increase the, the footprint of the nursing home facility. Um, it will take us into the future in terms of an assisted living where uh, seniors can um, have a comfortable place to live. And if and when the need arises for more acute care in terms of nursing um, services that uh, they they wouldn't have to leave there. They could, you know, be part of that additional um, skilled nursing care facility. And then, in the you know, in the event that they do need senior um, assistance in terms of dementia care, we we want to be able to provide a continuum of care for our um, elderly population in St. Croix County. Okay, we've had two. Um, referendums on this and the citizens have spoken that um, senior care is part of the county's mission and to provide that level of service um, the plan is in place we've got architects hired um, that are in the process of developing a design for the new facility the board has you know uh, as recent as this week reaffirmed their support for the project um, in terms of uh, programming and also a, a, a budget going forward. And so the board has uh, reaffirmed their support for this project and we're, we're moving ahead. Okay, along those lines, because you had said how the prior board had um, wanted you know, to basically get the nursing home off of the levy. And by off the levy, there's still millions of dollars being expended. It's yes. just that there was funds coming in from the federal level and, right. and the state level, I assume. Right. And uh, so reimbursements were basically equaling out with the expenditures and exactly. that's where you got to this zero levy. We're gonna, now what's gonna be the impact by increasing these beds? I'm assuming the increase of the skilled nursing and the dementia, is there going to be sufficient offsets from aid uh, from the government for there, there, other levels of government? There will need to be um, a certain portion of the funding uh, will, will need to uh, be part of our property tax levy. So going forward, there will be some funding for the, the 100 bed um, nursing total facility. facility total. Uh, there will be some reliance on the... Do you know, can you give us a figure what it might be projected to be once... You know, we're still out? looking at, we're still looking at that because we're, we haven't really defined exactly what the, the program spaces will be uh, for the nursing home facility, but there will be some uh, impact on the property tax levy going forward. But the... Um, we're being responsive to what what the citizens of St. Croix County are asking for, and that that is um, providing quality care for our senior uh, citizen population and in a five-star um, health center facility, one of the highest rankings uh, given to health center facilities in the state. We're at the very top in terms of quality care 
and nursing care, and, and we want that to continue. And okay, so you say five stars a high rated, but how does that compare? Do our other counties in the nursing home have nursing homes as well? Um, several counties do own and operate um, health center facilities, and so um, some have chosen not to, but uh, there are many, many counties in the state of Wisconsin that still retain a uh, health center nursing home facility as part of their core mission, and St. Croix County will continue to do that. Okay, so um, without knowing specific future dollars, we, we do know from the 2014 budget um, that it, that represented anyway 4.2 million total expenditure, but uh, there's some income from that. You have total spending in the whole budget of 68 million. Correct. And you operate on a zero base budget, so that's you're looking at uh, federal and state aids as being one significant source of funds. Um, then there's, of course, property tax and the property tax levy. Now I see that that has barely ticked up over a, about a five year period of time. Um, this year, the total levy went up 5%? It was a little over 5%, right. And, and uh, that's but, comparable to like um, other forms of government, but they, with the increased in um, the equalized values of the property right. in St. Croix County actually saw a little bit of a reduction in the mill rate. Right. Our levy, um, property tax levy for the county increased uh, slightly over 5%. We, we try to maintain zero um, level increases in the departmental budgets, but we do factor in allowances for some inflationary increases. Uh, but if we, if we look at the overall growth of St. Croix County, uh, our budgets are, are aligned with that growth in, in the areas where it's occurring um, in transportation, in public safety, in law enforcement, um, and in health and human services. And so um, as one of the fastest growing counties, our equalized value um, since 2008 is starting to rebound. And so we're seeing um, we're seeing new construction, new growth, uh, economic development in St. Croix County. And so that growth has been able to absorb uh, some of that property tax levy increase in terms of our increased equalized value and net new construction. And so the actual mill rate uh, for St. Croix County, and that's uh, kind of how it's applied and how, how they look at these budgets, our mill rate actually uh, saw a very slight reduction in for the 2015 budget. And to give some folks some idea, that's uh, three dollars and ninety-five cents per thousand. Correct. So if you're two hundred thousand dollar home, then that would be about eight hundred dollars is going to the county. Right. To fund all of these things: the health and human services, public safety, transportation, so forth. Yeah. And um, I, you mentioned the equalized value and property values. There was the peak was 2008, as you mentioned, of um, over 8.7 billion. And then there was almost a two billion dollar drop to 2012, and now just in the last couple of years, it's back up to about 7.6 billion count, countywide. Is that Correct. right? Correct. Yes. I mean, the, it, it kind of parale parallels the. Um, the economy nationwide um, in 2008, that's when it seemed right. like the bottom fell out in terms of the housing market and the economy. Then in 2008 started a, um, a decline. And so you will, the uh, equalized value figures that, you're, that you have there reflect um, a, a national and statewide economy. So it wasn't just St. Croix County that saw um, their tax base eroding. Um, and over the past two years, now we're starting to see that come back. It's not, it's not at the level that it was in 2008 before, um, before it started that decline, but we're starting to see um, uh, good economic development, good, uh, good growth in terms of uh, St. Croix County. We're, we continue to experience one of the lowest unemployment rates in this region. Yeah, it's down um, to, you had you brought the latest figures down to 2.8% as of uh, November, um, just a couple months ago. And uh, that compares favorably to Twin Cities overall, 3.0. Uh, Wisconsin's at 
5.2 statewide, and of course the nation is at about 5.8. Right, and I believe we're at around 2.8. So, you know, the, our second lowest in the state, only yes. to uh, Pierce County. So. Correct. So uh, those are all strong indicators of St. Croix County's um, economic uh, condition. Um, uh, when we issued some additional debt this past year uh, to fund some of our capital improvement uh, projects, we, we opened up a new facility in New Richmond, Wisconsin to house the Health and Human Services employees. We had to move them out of the, uh, the old facility that they were in in New Richmond, which is adjacent to the existing nursing home. Uh, we converted a, a facility in New Richmond and uh, put some capital improvements into this facility, and now we have our, our Health and Human Services employees, approximately 130 employees, uh, working in New Richmond. We were able to keep them in New Richmond. We thought that was important. Um, and we're also embarking on a major um, infrastructure improvement for our public safety communications. And so this past year when we issued debt, um, as you know, Jamie, when you go to market, you have to, uh, the financial uh, consultants, Moody's, comes in and does an actual review of your finances uh, with a microscope. And um, we- well, the St. Croix County. We uh, were right. able to uh, reaffirm our A1 double uh, A1 rating and so it, it's a very strong uh, financial rating and uh, St. Croix County was able to retain that. In fact we actually improved since 2010 in terms of our bond rating and so that's very important and that's not me looking at the books and saying that that's actually Moody's Investor Service coming in and scrutinizing our finances and reaffirming our strong financial picture here at the county. And so it's a reflection not of what I've been able to do, but what the, the Board of Supervisors has been able to do in terms of trying to keep those um, finances uh, strong in terms of keeping expenditures low and looking at our revenue stream and the economic development that's occurring in St. Croix County. Those are all positive, strong financial indicators um, to the financial people that look at this. And so we're poised um, for the future. We're, um, our budgets reflect uh, the needs of the citizens and going forward into the, into the future. Now, you mentioned about uh, the, mill, uh, the mill rate and the property tax, but the property tax is less than half of your total revenue. Um, another portion, of course, is the state and federal aids. It's going to be also uh, revenue for services rendered that, that comes in. Uh, one that a lot of po people point to or are curious about is the sales tax, because St. Croix County is one of the state, or one of the counties in the state that exercises the option of the extra half percent sales tax. Right. And uh, I see in looking at the last f several years, that kind of is all over the map. It's, it's a little bit of a roller coaster. I don't know how you budget for something like that because you don't know what the economy is going to do for the next year. The state, um, the state actually assists uh, counties that do have the additional sales tax, and they, the the state of Wisconsin Department of Administration tries to put out projections uh, to counties in terms of preparing or planning for future budgets. We have taken a more conservative approach towards that budgeting. We look at those estimates and we actually, um, we budget slightly less than what the state of Wisconsin projects for sales tax uh, revenue growth because we feel um, a more conservative approach is, is the wise approach towards budgeting. But we've been able to come in um, real close to uh, what we're actually budgeting for sales tax. It, it's not a big, it's not a big revenue source for our budget. That's but it, under six million still, or yes, approximately. Yeah, I mean, in which terms is of less our, than ten percent of your entire. Right. So it's not a, it's not a huge revenue source for our budget, but it it certainly does help fund for fund some of the necessary services that we provide. Well, and we talk about the source of the different uh, funds. Obviously, it's always good to get federal and state aid to assist in these major projects, uh, whether it's uh, care for the elderly or the transportation right. items. And uh, anytime you're representing a, a, a governmental unit, there's going to be um, uh, 
uh, people who look at it from a perspective of what are we getting out of this. Um, similar to on the federal level, Wisconsin gets back, I don't know if it's like 78 cents on every dollar it sends to Washington. And so here in St. Croix County, we definitely have a more urban area and we have more rural areas of the county. And I, I know that part of the move to having only 19 supervisors is trying to alleviate some of that. I don't know if that's helped or not, but you still end up with where were you getting your property taxes and your sales taxes. And yeah. we know that rough almost half of your property tax value is on the Western. Um, certainly if you, New Richmond is your second most uh, or higher generator of property tax taxes. And then the sales tax. Do they ever track where the sales tax comes from? You know, they, they do. And it, it, it's the areas that you mentioned, Jamie. It's the more the Western um, portion of the, the county that generates a lot of that. But, you know, we're, we're a large county and uh, we have a, a real good mixture of urban and rural. Our uh, agricultural community is strong and uh, we need to support that, uh, that part of the county in terms of the, uh, the services and the, the, the business that uh, the agricultural community provides. And so we have to make sure um, the, that, that part of our um, county, that part of our economy is strong and so that we're serving not only the, you know, the western side of the county, but also right. uh, the eastern side where a lot of that agricultural community um, exists. And so our county is unique, I think, in some ways to compared to the other counties in the state that we have such a, a strong urban core being that close to the Minneapolis-St. Uh, sure. Paul metro area, but yet a large part of our county is still rural and agricultural. And so... Um, well, part of that, sure, you get more taxes and generate more revenue with that increased development, but it also adds more headaches and more uh, greater need for services as well. Well, we have to, we have to, yes, we have to serve um, all residents of our county, no matter, you know, if they're in the, you know, more of the urban areas of the county versus rural, but, you know, uh, we have to make sure that our services are being provided um, equally to everyone in, in the entire county. But that, that's the challenge of uh, county government. Uh, but, you mentioned our funding sources, right. our funding streams in, in so many ways, county services that we provide are services um, that historically the state of Wisconsin uh, provided, but um, county government is in many ways an arm of the state. And so a lot of the services, especially in the health and human services area, um, and some in the judicial um, areas of county government in terms of our courts. Clerk of courts, right. The clerk of court and the judiciary. A lot of those, those um, services are state-driven uh, state services that we provide at the county level. And so we're constantly you know, working with our legislators at the state level to make sure that those funding streams are adequately um, represented when it comes to providing those services and a lot of times you know the state gets criticized for um, you know passing these um, uh, mandates if you want to call them that and then not providing the adequate um, Unfunded level of funding. mandates. Yeah right. I mean they, we hear about that I think our our legislative delegation is real supportive of St. Croix County and so we work with them and they um, our, we're fortunate to have the legislative delegation that we have. I think they're responsive to the county. They listen to us. We meet with them regularly. And they're, well, one, they're of the, one of the problems with affluence, and, and St. Croix County is looked as a, a generally affluent county. I know, having experience on the Hudson School Board, that we get less state aid as our property values increase in the school district that's one thing they're looking at in Madison and trying to uh, get the aid to where it's seen as being more needed, right. but yet we also have growth in student enrollment, which helps uh, save us. Now, lately, it's leveled off a little bit, and, um, but from the county's perspective overall that you have to deal with on a daily basis, the projection into the future is growth. And Continued growth. Let's um, talk about that a little bit because I think you have the same projections from the Department of Administration that our school district's been supplied with. And 
overall, St. Croix County is projected to be either one or two over the next 25 years. Yes, in terms of projected population growth. And um, there again, our budgets need to reflect that going forward. Our, we have to make sure our capital improvement planning and our infrastructure is all able to sustain this growth. Um, you're gonna see uh, the Stillwater uh, River Crossing project uh, come on board in 2016 in terms of that, uh, the bridge being completed. That will, that will drive, that will continue to drive that growth. Uh, you'll talk to various economists and they'll try to speculate and look at what kind of impact that bridge will have on St. Croix County. I can only see it um, uh, providing continued growth. I, I don't know exactly, um, the, I, I've seen different estimates in terms of pr trying to provide exactly uh, you know, specific projections on growth, but I, I know, and I'm not an economist, but I know that that bridge will um, continue to serve St. Croix County in terms of um, its transportation needs, but it's also gonna um, result in continued growth, especially on, you know, in that part of the county. That northwestern that corner. That northwestern corner is gonna continue to see growth, and so we have to make sure that um, that we have the transportation system in place and uh, public safety, um, all county services that we provide are gonna be impacted by that growth and we need to be, have strong planning in place and, um, and working with our department heads, managers and making sure that their departments are poised and ready to sustain that level of growth. I think I saw the projections that you reference as far as uh, demography from the state of Wisconsin shows um, Hudson and the New Richmond area kind of growing about the same, you know, in some in excess of 50% over the next 25 years, which still would be less than the last 25 years. And then nobody was projecting that kind of growth that we've had, but uh, um, it's still going to grow and uh, keeping things in in pace. Uh, right. I mean, that that's a blessing. I think that we're fortunate to, to see that kind of growth, but that has an impact on public service delivery, not only at the school district level that I'm sure you're seeing in terms of uh, the educational needs of our, our county, but in terms of uh, the county and what we're responsible for, um, there will be an impact on our ability to provide those services. And so um, that growth is good, but it comes with a, um, a, a little bit of a price in terms of uh, the cost for our services. And, but, you know, I believe we're doing a responsible job of budgeting and projecting into the future and not, not over relying on the property tax for growth. We're looking at other, you know, ways of funding projects, but, um, you know, uh, we feel we're doing a, a pretty good job of uh, budgeting responsibly at the county level, but we have to be prepared for this growth. Okay. Well, I guess uh, with we're, as we tape this segment, we're uh, having another small snowstorm, and uh, so far we haven't had a lot in form of heavy snow. How are we doing, do you think, with our... Our highway department budget is looking better than it was last year. If you recall, last year we were... Um, it seemed like we had our snow plows out about every other day in terms of uh, ice and snow. This year has been a little bit different, um, but overall we, when we budget in the transportation area, we try to be able to sustain those swings in, um, in needs um, and so that you know, we, don't, uh, we don't have a huge increase one year and uh, then you know, right. that fluctuation, that creates difficult budgeting. So we try to maintain a, a pretty even balance. And uh, the, the road crews, if they're not out uh, snow plowing, they're out cleaning brush, they're cleaning right of way, and they're preparing the, the roads for next year's construction season. Well, we're only in early January, so we'll knock on wood right. as to whether we can sustain it. And hopefully we're not out plowing roads in early May like we were the last, last couple year. years. Yeah. All right, well, very good. Well, maybe we'll have you back uh, once uh, the new nursing home facility is up and uh, see you know, where our county and how far it's grown. 
I would, uh, I would love to do that, Jamie. It's always good to see you. All right. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. And I want to thank the viewers for being with us for another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal.